Pepper says, wait till you see how much stuff we decluttered in 2023. Hello everyone and welcome back to A Hoarder's Heart. On this episode, we are going to be doing a year in review for 2023 and how far we've come from all these years from decluttering and cleaning. If you're new to my channel, my name is Miss Hart and I am a recovering hoarder. And on this channel, I have shared how I've recovered in my hoarding disorder, explained the attachments and why I feel the need to save every single item and what tips and tricks and tools have worked for me to finally let go, to finally detach my emotions and myself from the, all the items so that I could successfully let them go for the long term and not have any regrets on anything that I've let go in the past, what I gave away, and to be successful in continuing these changing patterns and behaviors so that I can continue decluttering all the way. So in January, 2023, we started out in the bedroom. I wanted to reorganize my closet. I wanted to go through more clothes because I knew I had some more in the basement to start to declutter. So we did the Kamari method on all of the clothes that I had. And this has become a January tradition for me to go through all the clothes and let go of them. We got rid of a lot of clothes and we'll be doing it again this year because I had clothes from storage that is now emptied out and I have to go through all of them in a couple of weeks. And then we went back into the master bedroom because I wanted to reorganize it. I realized I didn't have key organizational pieces that would help me maintain the space. And I found out that I was a visual organizer. I also had to make sure that I could put it away quickly. I am ADHD. So for me to put something back, it has to be in a one, two step. Open the basket, put the item in, and then close the basket. It has to be quick for me to complete those tasks. And now that I understood my organizational style, as a butterfly, if you follow Clutterbug, I was able to clean up the bedroom and we have come such a long way since we started this journey. After that, we moved into my youngest son's room because it had become messy again. I wanted to make sure that my kids had the ability to clean up and declutter because I do have hoarding disorder and my children have a strong potential of developing hoarding disorder too through genetics and behaviors. When I was a kid, I never learned how to clean and declutter. I never learned how to make those decisions. No fault through my parents. They had no clue that I had it. My mom was actually very neat and tidy, almost an OCD minimalist, but she didn't know that her little girl had hoarding disorder. That was on my father's side of the family. She just thought that as I got older, I would just start to clean up on my own. But instead, my hoarding blew up into a full-blown coping mechanism for the stresses of life. And I didn't want that to happen to my children. And once I started recognizing some of the same hoarding behaviors that I had as a child, I quickly realized how important it was to teach them how to clean, how to let go, how to make the decisions, how to give cheerfully, and how much they can start to enjoy a clean room too. The idea is that I didn't want these hoarding behaviors to become subconscious habits for them where they would routinely hoard every day and it would become more of a personality trait. If I could prevent them from developing these hoarding behaviors and patterns, then hopefully my children will be the generation that breaks this hoarding cycle through my family lineage. And in the tail end of winter, we started talking about the fear of having someone in our house. Because I had noticed that even though I had cleaned out so much and that the living area wasn't so bad, I still had this deep rooted fear of having people over my house. So we started having open and honest conversations about these fears, knowing that people really weren't gonna judge me if I still had a mess. That it was more internally myself who was creating this fear. 
And as we were working through those emotions, we were also rearranging the house so that we can better maintain it and decorate it. And speaking of decorations, we still had a lot of holiday decor that we had to go through. And as the weather turned into spring, we decided to get back into the laundry room because it was quickly hoarded again. We had a blocked doorway. That's considered level four hoarding. So we quickly decided to clean this up. And I had realized what a deep rooted subconscious habit that was for me to just dump and go everything into the laundry room. And instead of feeling guilt that the mess came back, I gave myself grace to accept that it was okay that this happened because we're going to clean it out again. We're going to change it. It's going to be okay. We are in the solution of changing these hoarding behaviors. And sometimes we need to allow ourselves the time to process it. And during cleaning out the laundry room, I decided to start to go through my craft supply. That was something I had feared decluttering for years because I believed that I couldn't be happy without every single one of my crafting supplies and the ability to create at any moment. My attachments to my crafting supplies ran very deep within myself because for me, it actually made up the identity of the person that I thought that I was. So if I thought I had to let go of any of my crafting supplies, then I was going to lose my identity. Where I had PSD and was badly bullied, the only area that I felt self-confidence is was my ability to create and craft. I knew I was good at it. So that's why the attachment was so deep. And I believe that's why a majority of people with hoarding disorder save everything. I believe they feel very similar to that. But once you start to let go, once you start to detach and start building that decluttering confidence, everything starts to change. The attachment to the items start to almost evaporate. And you start to realize that the items that you felt so deeply attached to is actually not you. It was a story that your mind created, which for me started in childhood when I had recognized how much I loved all of my toys and my stuff because I could create and imagine and I was so happy. And as I got bullied through middle school and as I was badly abused through an awful relationship when I was 17, my mind continued on saying that I'm safe and happy with my stuff. I had programmed my nervous system over and over again that when I was scared, fearful or felt alone and sad and anxious and depressed that my stuff would rescue me and bring me that comfort that I needed. That's why over time, baby step decluttering worked for me. Doing a small section at a time worked for me. It was what my nervous system could handle and process and also rewire decluttering to be a positive experience. Of course, other behaviors had to change as well, like not impulse shopping. If I was decluttering my hoarded house, I needed more things going out of my home than coming in. That's why I did the monthly no spend challenge. That has helped me immensely. And if you would like your own copy of the 2024 no spend challenge please visit my etsy shop for your digital download the link is in the description box below but i think my greatest achievement in 2023 is how much progress we made in this hoarded basement because each week especially in the summertime we really focused on decluttering and we had so many tossy tossy piles we have gotten rid of thousands upon thousands of items. And you know what? You can do this too. I don't have some kind of superpowers that no one else has. You can start to let this go too. Each and every week, start in an area that you feel confident in decluttering. Let go of what feels right in your heart. You don't want to force yourself to let go of anything you're not ready to let go of. We're trying to make decluttering a positive experience. If you do this 
each and every week, you will start to see the spaces open up. We are a loving YouTube family here, and we will cheer you on every step of the way. That's how I've gotten this far. This is how I've never given up because of all of you cheering me on. And I'm so grateful for all of you. And what will we be doing in 2024? Well, there are still some areas in this house that need to be decluttered and organized and sorted. And I have full faith that together we will be able to clean and declutter it and hoard no more in 2024. And my hope and my prayer is that this video motivated and encouraged you to clean, declutter, and let go of something in your home today too.